So here the first step is to um, make a logarithm on both sides, okay? So that you can remove logarithm on both sides. So first you can write that log x square minus 1 to the base 2 is less than log 2. Okay, 1 can be written as log 2 to the base 2, okay? Now this is of the form log x uh, log x less than log y. Okay. Now if you have an inequality like this, you can always write x less than y. Okay, you can always write x less than y, but you should ensure that the base is greater than 1. Okay, if the logarithm base is gre greater than 1, then if log x is less than log y, then x is less than y. This is the property which we are using here. Okay, now uh, using this, now we can remove logarithm on both sides because the base is 2, which is greater than 1. So when you remove, this inequality will remain the same and you can write x square minus 1 less than 2. The inequality remains the same. Okay. Since the base is greater than 1, you are able to write this expression. Okay. Now, by adding 1 on both sides, you can write x square less than 3 Now, subtract 3 from both sides, you get x square minus 3 less than 0 which can be written as x square um, minus root 3 square less than 0 which is of the form x square minus x square which can be written as x plus a into x minus a that is x plus root 3 into x minus root 3 less than 0. Okay. Now we have to see which are all the critical points that is at what points the individual brackets become 0. So the first term x plus root 3 the it, the, it becomes 0 then x minus root 3 and the second bracket that is x minus root 3 which becomes 0 then x is equal to root 3. Now you mark these two points that is minus root 3 and plus root 3 on the number line so it divides the number line into three areas okay one is x is uh, less than minus root 3 that is the first area and in you know, a second area is x between minus root 3 and plus root 3 this is the first area that is x is less than minus root 3 and this is the second area where x is between minus root 3 and plus root 3 third area is x is greater than root 3 now we have to take values in each of these uh, you know ranges and substitute in the inequality and see which range satisfies the inequality okay now first to take a value in this range okay when x is very much less than minus root 3 the inequality does not hold good okay and you take a value in you know greater than root 3 you take a big value like x is equal to 10 and substitute here and see both the terms are positive. So multiplying both the terms you get, uh, you don't get uh, less than 0. So the number uh, greater than root 3 also the, doesn't satisfy the inequality. So that is also removed. So the third one is, you know, between minus root 3 and plus root 3. You substitute a value. For example, you substitute value 0 here. So you get both root 3 and the minus root 3, which is uh, an, a negative number. So for any number between minus root 3 and plus root 3, the inequality holds good. On, uh, on the other two, you know, ends. Uh, the inequality is not satisfied. So from this, uh, this is the range of x for which the inequality holds good. Okay, so you know, I'm marking here with a new color. So this is the range of x for which the inequality uh, that is. Uh, Holds good that is x is between you know root 3, x is less than root 3, and x is greater than minus root. But this is not the final solution because uh, we have to consider one more you know constraint here. Our uh, given expression is uh, log x square minus 1 to the base 2 less than 1. Okay. So here uh, you have to ensure that uh, uh, x square minus 1 is always a positive number. 
because the logarithm exists only for positive numbers. Logarithm doesn't exist for negative. Whereas uh, <coughs> the, this number, uh, when you take uh, any one number between minus root three and plus root three, for some some of the numbers x square minus one is becoming a negative number. For example, if you put x equal to zero, then x square minus one is a negative number. So logarithm doesn't exist. So that doesn't make sense. So x square minus one from x square minus one, you know, uh, greater than zero, we should take one more condition. Okay. So we have to write x square minus one greater than uh, you know should be greater than zero. X square minus one. X square minus one should always be greater than zero. Okay. Now this can be written as uh, of the again the similar uh, to earlier. This can be written as x plus one into x minus one. Is x square minus a square x plus a into x minus a. Okay, so this is not required. You need not add one on both sides. You have some remove. You know, erasing that, and um, I'm directly writing this expression as x plus one into x minus one is greater than zero. Now the critical points here are you know one and minus one. That is plus one and uh, minus one. Now again, you know, we have to see you know three different uh, domains. One is x less than minus one, x is uh, greater than one, and x is in between minus one and plus one. Okay, you have to take individual domain, one numbers in each, and then whether you have to check whether inequality satisfies, and you have to identify on which region inequality satisfies. You take a very number which is you know very much less than minus one, then you can see that both the numbers are you know positive when you multiply. Both numbers are uh, negative, and when you multiply, it becomes positive. So this inequality is satisfied in the first range, and uh, it is equally same when x is very much greater than one. You take a number x greater than one, substitute here, you get positive. Number. Whereas if you take a value between minus one and plus one, the inequality you know will always be negative, not positive. So from this, we get uh, that the answer as you know x should be uh, less than minus one, or x should be greater than plus one. Okay, so so basically now we have got uh, two solutions of x, the real, you know two domains of x. Of, uh, so that now we have to you know find out the intersecting region of that. So you combine you know uh, note down the domains in the number line. We draw a number line. So here I am again uh, drawing the number line to represent both the domains in the single line. So I am marking uh, plus root three here and uh, minus root three on the other side and uh, plus one here comes zero and uh, plus one comes here. Okay and uh, minus one comes here. Okay. Now from the first solution, from the first expression we got x should be between minus root three and plus root three. And from the second one, this is the first one, x should be between minus root three and plus root three. That is, you know, this range. X can be anywhere in this domain. And the second one, x can be less than minus one, and x can be greater than plus one. This x can be minus one, and this is x can be greater than one. This is the second domain. Now we have to find the intersecting region. Actually, so x can be in this range. This is a common domain. This is also the common domain. So x can be in this range. That is, you know, minus root three to minus one on one side. Any number between minus root three and minus one, and uh, any number uh, between one and root three. 